Hello, welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to calibrate an analog input signal. We'll calibrate our input sensor readings by identifying the maximum and minimum readings that the sensor will generate during a calibration mode. By knowing this range, our launchpad can make more intelligent decisions on how to react to a specific analog reading. In this example, we'll use a photodiode, or a light sensor, which will fade an LED based on the instantaneous readings in comparison to expected minimum and maximum values that we captured during our calibration setting. If our photodiode readings are closer to the minimum values, the LED should be very dim. If the readings are closer to our max values, then the LED should glow more brightly. In this example, we're going to use this photodiode, or light sensor, as our analog input, which is connected to pin P1.3, or analog channel A3. To hook up our photodiode, we have one terminal connected to VCC, and another terminal connected to ground via 10K ohm resistor. We'll read the analog values coming from the photodiode by connecting a wire from our analog channel A3 to the leg of the photodiode that is connected to ground via the resistor. Secondly, we're going to use our internal LEDs on our MSP430 G2 launchpad, which are connected to pin number 2, or P1.0, for the red LED, and pin number 14, or pin P1.6, for the green LED. The red LED tied to pin number 2 will turn on during the calibration state. This will last for the first 5 seconds of the sketch. During this 5 second window, we'll continuously read the analog readings from our photodiode and update our min and max values. Once the 5 second calibration period is done, the red LED will turn off. We will use a green LED to dynamically visualize the analog readings of the photodiode. So now that our hardware is set up, let's plug in our launchpad to the computer. Next, let's open up Energia. We'll import an existing code example by going to File, Examples, Analog, Calibration. In this code example, the first thing that we do is declare a few variables. These variables are nicknames for the pins that we want to use for our input and output. We'll also create a few variables that will hold our analog input readings, called sensor value, sensor min, and sensor max, which will hold the min and max values coming from our photodiode. In setup, we will calibrate our analog sensor. First, we turn on the red LED to signify to the user that we're in the calibration state. We use the pin mode and digital write functions to turn the red LED on. Then, we use the millis function to see how long the sketch has been running. As long as the sketch has only been running for less than 5,000 milliseconds, then we continue to calibrate the device. During calibration, we use the analog read function to read the instantaneous outputs of our photodiode. We use a few if statements to see if the latest reading is higher than our existing max value, or lower than our existing min value. As we continue to calibrate, our window of acceptable ranges becomes smaller and more accurately defined. Once 5,000 milliseconds have elapsed, we break out of the calibration mode and turn our red LED off. Next, we jump to our loop section in our code. In the loop section, we read our instantaneous analog reading. Then we map this reading linearly between our expected min and max values to a value between 0 and 255. We also use a function called constrain to ensure that we cap our values between 0 and 255 and don't go beyond this range. Now that we have it all mapped and constrained, we use the analog write function to alter the brightness of our LED. And that's it. Just run your code by pressing the verify and download button and let's start changing the LED's brightness by waving our hand in front of the photodiode. Now we can see that if the analog reading is closer to the max value of the sensor, or with no shadow, the LED is brightest. When the analog reading is closer to the min value of the sensor, or when a shadow is present, the LED is dimmer. The closest analogy to this example is your cell phone's backlight. When in an automatic setting, your LCD's backlight will glow more brightly when you're outside in the sun. Alternatively, the backlight becomes dimmer when you walk into a poorly lit room. 